So good afternoon, everybody. It's great to see so many faces. <laughs> uh, today we'll talk about uh, what's the uncertainty on your machine learning predictions. But before we go into that, let's give a brief introduction about ourselves. So this is Fabian Janssen. My name is Eva van Wiel. We're two data scientists working at ING. And we're trying really hard not to be too much of a banger. So uh, bear with us. <laughs> so say you're throwing a dinner party, right? And you're expecting about 10 guests. Then it could be the case that on the day that you're actually throwing the party, there are some more or some less, right? However, it's kind of important to know how many more or less. Say you're doing grocery shopping and it's just one person more or less or six out of 10. So in this case, uncertainty really matters. You really want to know, it's gonna be one more or six more. So then speaking uh, of this uncertainty, we're trying to build our own package in Python and to our knowledge, we've not found another one that does it in a similar way. Uh, so we thought, okay, we think it's very important to show these type of uncertainties with your prediction. So let's build our own. So when I'm talking about uncertainty and errors, what is it that I actually mean? So for us, we're looking at how far could we be off in our predictions? So as data scientists, we're trying to make models right to give predictions. So it's also important to realize how far could we be off? So what's the uncertainty or error in each of the predictions that we make? So there are actually two types of uncertainty. First one, they call systematic uncertainties. And these are related to, for example, the type of model that you, uh, that you use to try to solve your problem. Or whether you have missing data that turns out to be very important for the problem you're trying to solve, but you just don't have it at hand. Today, we'll not talk about those, actually. <laughs> we'll talk about the second type of uncertainty, which is called statistical uncertainty. And they come from the fact that we have limited training data, for example. So let's start with an example to get a bit of a feel about this. So say we are creating a data set according to a known sigmoid probability distribution. So we know we have a slope of four and we have a bias of zero and we're just generating in this example, 100 data points. So if we try to fit a logistic regression to this and we try to get back this exact same curve, we'll probably find a slightly different uh, slope and bias. In this case, it's 4.7 and 0 0.1. Well, it kind of makes sense, right? Because we only looked at 100 data points. So we're kind of likely to not exactly find that slope that we knew beforehand and the bias that came with the distribution, how we defined it. So if we would have had a different data set, probably again, the bias and the slope would have been slightly different. So what if we repeat this example a thousand times? So we generate a thousand different data sets and we fit a logistic regression to each of those data sets. We'll get something like this. So we'll get a distribution for the slopes that we could have fitted for this uh, distribution and bias. And in orange, you actually see all the curves that we fitted around the black one. That's the one that we know with a slope of four and a bias of zero. And as you can see nicely here, there's kind of a lot of space around the exact uh, function that we're trying to fit, right? So this is sort of already showing the type of uncertainty that we have by limited amount of data. So, yeah, well, that's basically what I just said. <laughs> so how do we then estimate these uncertainties, right? Because you rather not just do this uh, a thousand times every time and then make error bands like this. So we have two steps. So the first one is we need to estimate the uncertainty in the model parameters that we actually have. And once we've calculated the uncertainty over these parameters, we actually need to propagate those uncertainties onto our individual predictions. So now let's get away with the theoretical kind of example and let's look at a real data set. Um, maybe most of you already know it, but there's a data set about the probability of surviving the Titanic. So we'll look into that one today. So in this data set, you have all kind of information about the passengers on board, say the fare they pay to get onto the ship, 
uh, what class they were into, first, second or third class, whether it was a man or a woman, what was their age, and we try to predict what is their probability of survival uh, for the Titanic. So often as data scientists, we start by looking at some data distributions and we try to get a feel for these features, say uh, the class, for example, that they boarded the ship on. Uh, what does that tell us about the probability of survival, right? Even before we try to fit the model. And we see something interesting here. So in orange, we see all the passengers and in green, we see uh, the people that survived. And it seems that women in the status set, for example, survive more often, whereas people who pay third for a third class did not. So we already get a little bit of a feel what's going on with the data, but we don't know yet what's the uncertainty over these parameters, right? So we train a model. We've selected all these features like uh, gender, what they paid, and we have one target. Will they survive? Yes or no. We split our data on a train and a test set so that we know for certain that the performance that we measure is on an independent data set of which the model has never seen any data. And then we use our own package, we call it error tools, and we use our logistic regression implementation to fit the model. And we find these parameter values. So, okay, so uh, now that we train a model, uh, we're ready to uh, uh, get the uncertainties on the parameters. Uh, so, a little bit uh, back to theory, so on how we actually do it, let's say, behind the scenes. Um, when we train a model, when we fit a model, uh, we're actually, uh, often, in most models, we're uh, uh, minimizing a loss function, right? And it's kind of important to realize that when you minimize a loss function, implicitly, you're also maximizing likelihood. And this is something that we use in our estimation of our uncertainties. Okay, so when you train a model, you have model parameters, the bias uh, and the slope of the earlier one. Uh, and these are the ones that minimize the loss function, as you see in the picture below. Uh, at the same time, these are the parameters that actually maximize the likelihood, as you see in the picture on the right. Uh, so these are the optimal parameters in this sense. But it doesn't mean that other parameters are not likely. I mean, we could actually, if you look at uh, uh, the likelihood, we could just go a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, and it's still quite likely. Uh, it's kind of like saying, like, if I had a different data set, then I might end up just a bit to the right, just a bit to the left. So it's still very likely. So for us, the task to uh, estimate the uncertainty is basically saying, okay, what's the range, left, right, that we still consider likely enough? So that's what we'll do. To do this, um, we make, a, in our code, we actually make an approximation. We make a, a parabolic approximation of a loss function, basically saying that you uh, 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 approximate your loss function as a multivariate parabola. Um, this has a little benefit uh, for, the, uh, for the likelihood, but because it turns the likelihood into a, uh, into a Gaussian, into a normal distribution, a multivariate normal distribution. And this actually has a nice benefit because um, the, the model, the errors actually, they roll right out. Um, because a uh, normal distribution, multivariate, it has a covariance matrix, and the covariance matrix actually has all the information that we need. Because on the diagonal of this matrix, you find uh, the errors on the parameters. And actually, peripherally, the off-diagonal, they contain the correlations between the parameters, if you're interested in those two. So, we can apply this, we have uh, implemented this, and you can ask our uh, model, what are the errors on the parameters, and you see them here at the bottom. Um, for convenience, uh, we have also made a, a reporting function with which you can visualize uh, these parameters. And it's kind of interesting to see. Um, so here you see uh, the, all the features and their parameters and their uncertainties in one plot. Uh, and you see that fair, it has a large value. So the amount of money you pay to get on board the ship actually has a, 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 a lar very large parameter. So you might think this is a very important feature. However, it also has a large uncertainty. So in claiming that this is important, you're actually not very sure. However, if you go, if you look at sex, so whether you're male or female, it has a fairly large value, but it has a tiny uncertainty. So in claiming that this, is, this feature is important, you're actually quite sure. 
um, I just told you, so um, we make an approximation uh, of our loss function to determine our uncertainties on our parameters. So how good this approximation is, it also determines how good our estimates of our uh, parameters are. Uh, if this is a bad approximation, we can't trust the error estimates. So for this point, we have also made a, a reporting function with which you can visualize this. Um, and here you see an uh, example. And you know, in this case, you actually see that uh, the parabolic approximation and the original, they are very close. So this is actually a good approximation, which means that it's fairly okay to trust your uncertainty estimates. So now that we have uh, the uncertainty estimates on our model's parameters, um, we can actually use these to also make uncertainties on our predictions. Uh, so for this, a prediction is basically it's a function. It's a function that takes as inputs uh, your features and the parameters of your model. So to make the prediction, we just use the model parameters that we trained on. So let's say the optimal ones. So these are the values, like always, like you did always, uh, with which you make the prediction. And we use the uncertainties that we got on the model parameters to propagate these to uncertainties on our predictions. Now, there's not one way to do this. There's actually several ways with which you can do this. Um, uh, I just like to highlight two. They all have benefits. They have drawbacks. Uh, just two that we have implemented. We've actually implemented more, but two that are kind of intuitive. Or at least the second one, I'm sorry. Uh, the first one is, uh, I name it because it's, it's kind of a common technique uh, to estimate, quickly estimate uncertainties on your predictions. It's called linear error propagation. And it's interesting because you don't have to iterate, you don't have to sample, it's just one calculation, one equation, and uh, it gives you a very fast estimate. However, it uses an approximation of its own, so in some cases it may be inexact. And then, of course, uh, there is the hammer to anything that looks like a, a nail, just sample. So in this case, we sample uh, parameter values from the Gaussian uh, likelihood that we have, and by sampling different parameter values, uh, you use these to make predictions, you also vary your prediction, and you look at the variation, and that's basically your error. So this one, of course, gets more accurate if you sample more, but it also gets slower. So let's apply these to our test set. Yeah, so we trained our model, right? So now the next step is we want to make these predictions and visualize these uncertainties that Fab just explained you the theory behind. So, of course, we, like in sklearn, for example, we made a predict function in our error tools. And uh, we can give it some test, part of the test set that we set apart in the beginning, if you remember. And we'll get the probability of surviving the Titanic for these uh, data samples. Now we can also request from the model to give us uh, the errors on these predictions, uh, indicating which type of... Um, error propagation method you would like to use. So in this example, we use the uh, linear error propagation, but here you could also indicate, for example, that you would like to use the sampling one. Slightly slower, but maybe more accurate. However, what might be more interesting is to actually visualize these error rights, because if you would just look at lists of numbers of uncertainties, that might not tell us too much if we have a big test set. So what we did here is we're showing uh, all the test samples on the x-axis. Uh, ordered by their probability of surviving the Titanic from high to low. And in green, you see all the test samples that were labeled as yes, survived the Titanic. And the red ones are actually the ones that did not survive the Titanic. One very intriguing thing that I think that we can see here in this image is that we have someone, some ones here, more on the left, they are red. So in between the ones where the model actually said we have high probability of uh, surviving the Titanic, we actually see that there's large uncertainty on those test samples. So we, we could get an intuitive feel about the game, the model is saying uh, they are surviving, but there's a large uncertainty over those. This and they didn't survive in the end. Uh. And they probably didn't survive in the end. <laughs> exactly. Um, we made something else next to that because Maybe you do not want to look at your test set as a whole, right? Maybe you would also like to make uh, prediction curves. 
Because if we look at uh, real life data science problems that maybe you and I try to solve, it's quite common to make decisions on one single prediction. So for example, I don't know for the people that were at the talk of HIDE this morning at PECMED, they have a doctor makes a decision to dismiss a patient based on one number, right? So it's important we can actually uh, say something about uncertainty on individual predictions. So that's why we also uh, made the reporting functionality for that. So let's take an example. Say we have somebody like Fab. He is 42 years old. It's a male. Uh, he happened to book a ticket in the third class and he went aboard with no family. So let's visualize what is his probability of winning as a function of the fare that he will pay to get aboard. So if we look at this function, it might seem that the more he pays, uh, keep in mind it's a scaled version of the data, so if a scaled version of fare, uh, the more he pays, the more likely he is to survive. Well, I'll, I'll just pay a lot. Yeah. Just pay a lot, right? If that would be the case, then we'll just pay a lot and we hope we survive. But are we actually so sure that paying more will actually lead to surviving the Titanic, right? Maybe not. Let's look at the uncertainty of this individual prediction. We see it here. So actually we see that paying more, indeed in the curve, might lead to higher probability of surviving. However, the uncertainty also is growing a lot. So in fact, his probability of survival could have been anywhere here as well, right? We're pretty uncertain for this specific situation. I'm not getting on that boat. Should not get on the boat. <laughs> uh, so next to that, uh, these uncertainties do not only propagate to the predictions that we make, but they also propagate to the metrics that we use to determine how well our model is performing. So things like precision, recall, AUC, they're all impacted by these uncertainties that we have because of limited training data. So let's look at the AUC. And we see, for example, that for the model that we trained, we have an AUC of 0 0.84, which in itself is pretty okay, it's pretty high. But it's important to also keep in mind what is the uncertainty over this score, right? Because say your model is being used in a production environment, then it's important that the people that actually use this know what are the uncertainties uh, that your model actually has. So below we see an uh, ROC. Um, and we're actually giving the uncertainty here on the true positive rate, so in this direction. You could, of course, also calculate the uncertainty in the other direction, but it's a little bit uh, less interpretable, I would say. Um, yeah. So keep in mind, it does not only propagate to your predictions, but also to the metrics that you're actually showing about the model that you built. So to recap, we're not only creating a package in Python that you could use to train models, but we're also um, providing to you a way to estimate uncertainties on these predictions. And on top of that, we've made some reporting visualizations that can help you to interpret these uncertainties over the predictions that you make. Um, but what's next? Because we're really far from done. We started, I think, about two or three months ago, maybe. Um, so if you are enthusiastic now, please have a look at our GitHub code. But bear with us, because we need to refactor still a lot of things, and most likely over time things will change. Um, and there are a lot of other things that we would like to still get implemented. Uh, so first step, we need to put it on PyPy, because then at least it's easily pip installable. Um, we'd like to include other um, performance metrics, like the confusion matrix, because there as well you will get the propagation of this uncertainty of your model. Uh, we would like to include an option that you provide an already trained model to our package, and we'll just give back to you the uncertainties on a model that you already trained. Um, it's important to keep in mind that what type of model then, of course, you're providing, because the parabolic approximation that we were showing in this case, it holds for functions that are actually uh, minimizing a loss. Uh, so if we would like to do different models, like, uh, for example, tree-based models, we need to come up with a slightly different way of calculating these approximations. So it's not usable for all type of models now, which uh, leads to also maybe an obvious follow-up question. Can we do this for neural nets? 
Uh, we believe so, but it's not implemented yet. We made a start uh, with PyTorch, but there is uh, more work to be done. So if you'd like to contribute, also let us know, of course. Um, and one more thing that we're thinking about is now we looked at the classification problem, right? But a lot of problems in data science might be more of the regression type. So we'd like also to include uh, error estimations for regressors like chi-squared fitters, for example. So that's it. Thanks a lot.